back everyone to the second part of supercharging my dad's 79 Toyota Land Cruiser FJ40. So if you haven't seen the first part, I'd suggest going back and clicking this link and watching that. That'll give this video a lot more sense. But anyways, in the last part, I made this bracket to mount a Novi 1000 Paxson Supercharger. I ended off by painting both the tensioner and the bracket, but now that it's dry and all my parts have come in, I'm ready to bolt it onto the Land Cruiser and start running boosts to this motor and tuning it to get it to run perfect. So I'm going to go ahead and bolt the supercharger back up to this bracket, and we're going to figure out a way to run oil through the supercharger to keep it cool and connect its charge pipe to the carburetor. So now that the supercharger is bolted up and ready to spin, I need a way to pipe the charge outlet of the supercharger into the carburetor. So off eBay, my dad got this K&N bonnet that goes on that two barrel Weber car. So as you can see, it takes the platform of a four barrel and converts it to a two barrel. And I'll be able to run the pressure straight from the blower into this little bonnet. Look at this dude. So now that I got the bonnet on the carb, I need to connect the supercharger to the bonnet. So my dad got these two silicone 45 degree angles. This one is a three inch all the way, and this side is a three inch to two and a half. Since these are too long, I basically need to trim them down so I just have a very short little extension that connects them both together. So as you can see, I got both tubes to line up and they fit perfect. So now what I need to do is make an insert to go in between these two sections because there's no way I can put a clamp on just rubber. So my dad found this piece of stainless steel tubing. I think it's two and three quarters inch OD. So I'm just gonna cut a little section. They'll go right in between these three inch tubes. Then I'll use some boost tube clamps and I will clamp it down. everyone so I got all the clamps on this is completely temporary I would like to hide all of the bolts underneath but I'm gonna be taking this all back off to change jets so I'm not worried about it right now this will just be fine for the first test so this supercharger makes its own oil pressure in its gearbox so this Allen right here sucks oil and this plug on the other side blows out oil so my dad and I had a really hard time of finding the right thread for banjo bolts to run to an oil cooler so instead I went on the wood lathe and I made my own banjo bolts I drilled a hole straight through the center and then on the side where the banjo bolt fitting goes, I drilled a hole perpendicular to it so oil can flow through the bolt and out the banjo fitting. So I'm going to go ahead and bolt up these two banjo bolts and we'll tie up the cooler in the front of the radiator and then we'll fill this thing full of oil. So this supercharger calls for trick shift transmission fluid. So I'm just going to go ahead and start filling it and then we'll run it so we can pump it through that trans cooler. All right, everyone. So we filled up the supercharger with oil. I'm pretty sure it's pumping through the trans cooler. We're going to go on the first test drive and just see how it runs. And if it needs more fuel, I'll take the car apart and I'll put some bigger jets in it. So let's go test it. On the main jet, 
minutes. We went from a 150 and 145 to a 160 and 155. So we're gonna go ahead and put this car back together and we're gonna see what color the spark plug turns out to be and see if it runs any better. All right, everyone, we got the jets in, so we're gonna fire it up. We're gonna take it for a little test ride. We'll see if we have any more power. so much for watching I really hope you enjoyed this video this project was so much fun to make and I'm so stoked that it actually worked out and this Land Cruiser runs awesome with this supercharger there are a few tweaks that I did to it that I did not film like add this fuel pressure gauge as a boost gauge and we peaked out at 5 psi at max rpm I did lots of filing to the pulley on the supercharger and brought it from four inches to two and a half inches to get that 5 psi that I wanted and the last thing that we are going to fix is to take the mechanical fuel pump off and replace it with an electric one because of around 55 miles per hour when this engine is at high rpm it'll start to bog and die due to a shortage of fuel all in all i can definitely feel the power i'd say the supercharger added around 50 horsepower the land cruiser will still go the same speed but it'll just get to that speed a lot quicker than it used to so thank you guys so much for watching i really hope you enjoyed this series and i'll catch you on the next one